Anna. Happy Motivation Monday. How are you doing tonight? All right, hope you had a great weekend. I know I did. I got some rest. So thank you for joining me tonight and welcome to Straight Talk with Yo. That's me. I am your relationship style coach and I help you reclaim your power, your confidence, and your style after going through a divorce or a broken relationship. Okay, so I hope today that you started off your week fresh with your goals that you want to accomplish today, for the week, for the rest of the month, for the rest of the year, for the, the next 12 months, the next 12 years. I hope that you have planned out or, ma or mapped out what it is that you are desiring to do in your life. All right, so what are we going to do today to celebrate the things that we have accomplished today? I want you to look at yourself in the mirror. If you don't have your mirror, grab your phone, put it on the selfie mode. Don't have my phone right now, but... Put it on the selfie mode and point to yourself and say, you did a good job. Point to yourself and say, you did a good job. And better yet, record it and look at it every day as you telling yourself you did a good job because we need to remind ourselves of every little accomplishment that we have made. I know for me, it was very difficult for me to celebrate my accomplishments. I always was looking towards the future and say, well, when I got the master's degree, that's when I'm going to celebrate. Or when I buy, finally buy this dream car or when I accomplish this other big thing. And I will never celebrate the smaller accomplishments along the way. And what I started finding happening was that sometimes I didn't get to accomplish that big goal. And in the meantime, those steps I made along the way, I never uh, acknowledged them. And that's not good. You want to acknowledge everything that you have done, every milestone, every step. You want to take the time to acknowledge it. So let me know that you're out there tonight. Share it with us with someone who you believe can benefit from it. All right, I'll press the like button. All right, so tonight I'm going to start a new topic and it's going to be life after divorce or broken relationship. How did I get here? Right? Sometimes you try to figure out, I know I did, try to figure out like what happened? How did I end up in this situation? You know, and we're going to go way, way, way back to the beginning before you even got married and look at some things. Now this might not apply to everyone, but it's gonna to apply to someone. And so if I'm talking to you today, you get your pen and your paper out and you start writing down these notes because you know what? We are gonna start digging a little deep. And so how did I get here? All right, and so I'm gonna share a little bit of story about me, if you don't mind. Um, I remember after I got divorced, and of course, you know, I'm divorced, and because that's what this is all about, my journey after divorce and to becoming the woman that I am today. And so after my divorce, I was extremely angry. I was angry at God. I was angry at my ex-husband. I was angry at, you know, all these different people. And then eventually I started turning that anger inward because as time went on, I started to look way back to the very beginning of the relationship. And I started to see some things that I had overlooked that maybe I should have paid more attention to. And I was like, mm, if I had just paid more attention to these things, then maybe, just maybe, I might have been in this situation today. 
and so had to go back and process all these things and also look and see where my decisions that I made opened up the door for the opportunity for me to be in the position that I was at the time being divorced. And um, so, you know, once I had that kind of come to Jesus moment and was really able to be honest with myself, and this is not to take away responsibility from the other party, but what I've learned over the years is that you can't control everything that someone does or anything that someone does. You can only control you. And so when certain decisions were in my control, I probably didn't make the best decision. And so I had to come to terms with that. And so we're going to talk about that today. And once I was able to deal with that, then I was able to release a lot of anger, release a lot of my frustrations that I was feeling, release a lot of the shame that I was feeling because like, okay, you know we have to get grown now and accept certain things. Wasn't easy to do, but had to be done. And that was the beginning of freedom for me. Okay. So I'm just going to cover three things or three mindsets that you can have that cause you to make probably not the best decisions in your life if you honest with yourself and look back. Okay. And so they are, you had the go-getter mindset and that's go-getter man mindset. Number two, you felt like you had the out of time mindset. And number three is, ah, I done forgot it. You're going to make it happen mindset. There you go. Sorry about that. Make it happen. So number one, got to go get a man mindset. At, at some point in your time in, in life, you know, sometimes some women, I'm not saying you, but some women feel that, you know what? It's taking too long for me to get this man. I've been waiting. I've been patient. I've been doing all these things and he's still not coming. Okay. And in the meantime, other people around me, life is going on with them, going to weddings, being a bridesmaid, maybe being a chief bridesmaid. And you're like, when is it going to happen for me? You know, it's like that movie, 27 um, Dresses, with that lady who was always the bridesmaid and never the bride. And so, you know, you get tired of waiting. You're like, oh my goodness, when is going to be my time? So now you decide, you know what? No matter what, I'm going to get me a man. And so you, so this lady, she goes out there and she just picks someone that she think works and she may not even really check to see if this person aligns with what she wants, what her goals are. All goals have been abandoned. All, you know, desires of what she's looking for in a man has been abandoned because I'm going to get me a man. And so she gets this man and then boom. Life happens and you end up in problems. And fast forward to today, you are divorced. And you're like, what happened? I don't know what happened. But maybe if she's honest with herself, she might look back and see, hmm, I might have compromised in some areas because I wanted what I wanted. Am I telling the truth? Why am I telling the truth? You tell me if I'm lying. Okay. And so... We go to the mindset number two. This woman feels like she's running out of time. You know, she's like, oh God, oh my goodness. I'm at this particular age and it's time for me to be married. It's like, oh my goodness, I know it's, it's time. I, I can't be almost 40 years old and not married. Okay. That's just going to look bad. So you're trying to She's trying to conform to certain social norms that I have to be married by a certain age. And then she has that old clock banging on her. It ain't ticking no more. It's like bang, bang, bang. Like I need to have me some babies. Okay. 
So time is running out. I'm getting old. The eggs are getting old. It's time to have me some babies. Nobody's showing up. And so you're like, okay, let me find somebody that looks suitable. Okay, he looked like good baby daddy material. So I'm going to get him and I'm going to marry him. Right? And so now you end up in a situation and now fast forward. It didn't quite work out because again, this was... You didn't, this person may not have met all your criteria. You were being driven by one specific thing. It's like, I'm too old to be single, or um, my eggs are running out, or, you know, whatever the other reason was that you felt that you were running out of time. It's like, oh my goodness, I'm going to run out of available men if I don't pick one right now. And you pick someone, and boom. Now, the third one is, is the make it work. Okay, I'm just going to make it work. So this is the person. You're going to make it happen. You're going to make it work. This is the person where you're with someone. You probably took some time and you're like, you know what? I want to be with somebody of quality. And then when you start dating the person, you start seeing some signs. You start seeing like, hmm, something is not quite right there's some behaviors that i'm seeing and there's some things that are being said and there's some things that i'm hearing that's making me very concerned but because you want to have a spouse so badly or oh, this person if it's not you it's not you i'm just saying this person she wants a spouse so badly that she became selectively blind so all the bad behaviors that she was seeing, she decided, you know what, I'm just not going to see that because the ultimate goal was to get married. All the things that she was hearing, maybe someone said, girl, you know, that man's no good. This, 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 and the other. And I'm not saying that, you know, that you listen to everything that people say, but if you start hearing the same thing over and over again, then you might need to pay attention. And I knew for me, there were some things that were said to me while I was dating that I started to see manifesting in the dating relationship. And I chose to ignore it because I trusted this person more than I trusted myself. And I was like, you know what? The truth was, I'm like, you know what? Ain't nobody going to do, like, do me like this. I'm going to fix that. So you became the fixer. I became the fixer. I'm going to make it happen. And, well, then, then showed me. Because <laughs> the truth is, whatever it is you see in a relationship before you marry someone, when you marry them, it's going to get amplified 100%. You know, because, you know, we're on our best behaviors when we're dating. Right? We are on our best behaviors when we're dating. And so after you get married and you let your guard down, then it's like you're just going to see everything for what it is. So whatever you thought that you could have fixed or was just something small that you was just going to gloss over, you was going to turn a blind eye to, you was going to turn a deaf ear to, once you got married, it got amplified. Because now you're in this space. You weren't just seeing this person on the weekend now. You was living with them every day. And so now fast forward to you end up divorced and you saying, how did this happen? Why did this happen to me? But if we stop and we look back and we think, because, you know, if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes these things you don't want to say out loud to anyone, but you're like, in your mind, you're like, but you know, I did see this very thing and I did hear that and, mm, Wow, now it has come to full maturation and the relationship imploded and here you are right back where you started. But you're not exactly where you started. You're wiser now. Yeah. But part of this process of moving forward is being honest with yourself. And sometimes that is the hardest part of this whole process. And the main reason why a lot of women do not 
move forward and have the successful relationships that they're looking for because it's easier to look at the ex-husband and to look at the friends who didn't say anything to you and to look at the in-laws and the people who knew and didn't tell you or they told you after the fact and it's easy to blame everyone else and i can say this because i have been down the blame road that highway i'll call it i've been down the blame highway and at the end of the day i had to come to me look at me in the mirror and say you know what your land at the end of the day, you were the one that had to choose and you were the one that saw certain things that you ignored because you had a long-term agenda because you wanted to be married and you wanted to do these things. And in the meantime, you overlooked certain things. And so now here we are at the end, the full maturation of, the, of this whole situation and the very thing that you did not want, you end up happening, ended up happening. So now, what do we do? What do we do from this point on? Well, we got to pick up the pieces. And like I said, we got to be honest with ourselves and deal with the truth about ourselves and the thing that drove us to into these relationships that did not serve us the best. And what was that root thing? Out of all the things I mentioned, what was the root thing? You're gonna go get the man because you feel that you were running out of time. You feel that everybody is happening for everyone else and not you. You feel like, oh my gosh, if I don't get married, I'm not gonna have no babies or there are not gonna be any available men or out there. What's the root cause of all of this? fear. Someone type in fear. So fear was the root cause of, of these decisions being made. And it's not, it's never good to make any decisions out of fear because you know why you are not thinking rationally. You're not able to look at all size of a thing when you're being driven by fear because what happens when you're afraid you become anxious and when you become anxious your mind is flooded and you can't think straight imagine like if you walking down the street and you see like a like a, a dog come and bark at you and it looks like it's gonna bite you 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 might be walking down the street fine and then you might jump into the street trying to get away from the dog into traffic that can kill you so Fear is not a good thing because it causes anxiety and anxiety causes us to not be able to make wise decisions. So now you're like, all right, Yoland, I'm facing myself. I'm facing the truth about me. I'm facing the fact that, you know what? I did make this decision to marry this person. I mean, I didn't think it was going to get this bad. I thought that it probably was going to be something minor. I didn't think it was going to lead to divorce. But at the end of the day, I did see certain things. So now what? Where do I go from here? Well, the great news is that you don't have to stay there. Because I didn't stay there. Because it's easy for us to say, you know what? Oh my God, I messed up. I made this terrible decision and I messed up my life and I will never be happy again. That's a lie. I put in chat, that is a lie. You can have happiness again, but, big but, you have to do the work. You have to be willing to do the work, okay? And so if you are not willing to do the work, what you're gonna keep on doing is self-sabotaging. You're going to keep self-sabotaging and making the same mistakes over and over again until you deal with the issue, right? Am I right? Or am I right? So from this point on, what do we do? We got to deal with ourselves. We got to deal with, with the truth and we got to face it and we got to move forward from it. Because you know what? We live and we learn 
but if we don't apply what we've learned then we don't grow and so now is an opportunity to grow to learn and to grow from the mistakes that we have made to trust our instincts and intuition and to trust when you know we feel that thing oh something ain't right to investigate it and not allow fear to reign and cause us to make decisions that are not in our best interest so do you believe that you can have this great life again do you believe that you can stop self-sabotaging do you believe that you can have a healthy and whole relationship in the future if that's what you want so type in yes i believe say to yourself yes i believe i can do that i can do it i know that i can because i'm doing it i did it did the work wasn't easy oh my gosh it wasn't easy you know because then you gotta uproot and you gotta search and go back and then move forward because you can't move forward until you go back and understand what happened right then you gotta come to the present and now you can move forward with the tools and skills necessary for you to have that wonderful life that you are desiring that wonderful relationship even if it's with just with yourself if you say you know what y'all i'm done with the relationships i'm just gonna be me and probably just my kids and just move on with life that way you know but you still want to be in that whole and healthy place you don't want to have those thoughts negative self thoughts and and anger and unforgiveness and all these different things in your heart as a result of these decisions that you make and um, if you decide you want to have a relationship you want to have it whole healed you want to be the best you that you can be right so next steps are working on you working on you that's the next step is to work on you and get you whole so that you will not be motivated by the wrong things when looking for a mate or even anything in your life even if it's a job or you know making a decision about anything you don't want to be motivated by fear and anxiety right so if you want that for your life you know what you got to do got to reach out book a call book a free call let's have a chat a conversation let's see how we can move forward and get you to the place where you want to be and stop being in that place of being motivated by fear and anxiety okay and like i said if, if this is helping you and you think it can help someone else share this page share this this video because i want women out there to not feel like oh my gosh they cannot rise above the, this mistake in their life they can't rise above oh my gosh i made the wrong decision you don't want to feel like that i know i did i wanted to stop feeling that way so share it and also if you want my free gift free click on the link in the bio yofreegift.com all right so ladies and if there are any gentlemen out there thank you for watching thank you for supporting and dm me if you got any questions if you have any suggestions on things you would like me to address about life after divorce and getting ready for another relationship let me know because I know there's a whole lot of things that I can talk about regarding that because I have walked through so much of it. <laughs> but again, I just, I appreciate you taking the time to tune in with me. Thank you so much. 